One of the hardest things I've ever had to do <clears throat> was to appoint guardians for my children when they were small in case both my wife and I died in an accident or whatever. You think about who would be good parents to your small children in the event that you're, you're suddenly gone, suddenly you're not there. I mean, it happens. You read about it all the time. I mean, what, what criteria would you use to make such a choice? As Mother Day, Mother's Day approached, I, I began to think about this and wondered how God would choose the one who would be the earthly mother of His Son and be the one to raise the person who would become the savior of the world. And when I think about this, I play my favorite game. My favorite game is, if I were God. <laughs> Some people get, no, I'm right, it's just. So if it were me, if I had to make that, you know, going to send my son, he's going to be a savior, he's going to be a religious leader, what, what, what are the criteria? Well, first of all, I would choose someone with experience and training who knew something about children. Certainly a happily married woman with well-behaved children. You know, someone who's already proven her mettle. I would choose someone with money who could take care of my son in a proper way. I would make sure that this woman lived in Jerusalem, close to the temple and the best schools, because my son would be a religious leader and I'd want him to get the very best training that would be available. Of course, usually by this time my bubble pops, you know, and I realize that God's ways are not man's ways and His criteria for choosing is much different than man's. I mean, look at who He chose to be the mother of the Savior. He chose a young girl, perhaps 15 or 16, without experience in having or raising children. She wasn't even married yet. She was engaged to a man named Joseph. She was poor, she had no influence of any kind, and she lived as far away from Jerusalem as you could get, and that was Nazareth, because if you came from Nazareth, you got no respect in Jerusalem. So when it came to choosing the mother of Jesus, God, you know, He kind of went against the grain in all this. And I asked myself, why? Why Mary? Why her? What was it about her that put her into the most influential position any woman had or would ever have? You know, I don't think God did a kind of a random search and came up with this girl named Mary who lived in Nazareth. I believe there were particular reasons why He chose her to become the mother of Jesus. Reasons that you can see as you examine her life from the moment the angel came and announced the news of her pregnancy to the time when Jesus was crucified and resurrected. You can see why he chose Mary. First of all, Mary, Mary was submissive. Mary was submissive. I'd like to go back to the passage in Luke, read a little further if you will. Luke chapter one, verse 26, as Matthew uh, read before, now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee named, called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the descendants of David and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, he said to her, Hail, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at this statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. And Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? 
And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the holy offspring shall be called the Son of God. And behold, even your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age, and she who was called barren is now in her sixth month. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, the bond slave of the Lord, be it done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. As I said, one of the reasons that God chose her is because she was submissive. Submissive, you know, that's the S word, simply means obedient. Obedience doesn't mean that a person is without character or without talent or some kind of slave without a choice or opinion. In the Bible, obedience is a virtue. It's a trait of character that comes with practice. We know that she was submissive because she had already obeyed many of God's command. Long before the submission to the angel's words, she was already an obedient person. She was a virgin, she says, and had obeyed the commands regarding her sex life, even during the time of her engagement to be married. You know, some think it's okay to sleep together so long as we like each other, so long as maybe one day, maybe we might get married. They think that's fine. But Mary knew better and she obeyed. She was willing to trust and obey God even when what He was asking her seemed inconvenient and nearly impossible. You know, being obedient isn't always very high on a modern woman's agenda these days. Submissiveness is not a quality that you'll, you know, Oprah never had a show on submissiveness. And high profile women in government or in business or in entertainment or whatever, they don't talk about this particular virtue. But in order to be pleasing, today's young woman is told to be not submissive, but to be pretty. Make sure you have the right body and the right makeup and the right clothes. She's told be popular, know the right people, listen to the right music, activities, have the latest phone and be independent. Prepare for a good career so you can make it on your own and not have to depend on anybody, especially a man. Wow. Now what's interesting about Mary is that we have no physical description of her of, or of her lifestyle. We don't know what she looked like. I mean, she could have been tall or short, she could have been heavy or thin. Maybe she was shy or could have been strong-willed. We, we really don't know. We certainly don't know about her clothing or how popular she was. But we do know that she was obedient. And for that quality, God not only chose her, but He showered her with many, many important and valuable blessings. You see, God blesses a woman who goes against the grain and practices godly obedience. I mean, look at Mary and look at the blessings that she received. First of all, He gave her a terrific husband, a man who was faithful to God and faithful to her, a man who was patient, a man who was kind, I mean, when Joseph found out that she was pregnant, he married her anyways, and he waited until after the baby was born to have sex with her in order to obey God's command to him. A man who was a good father. God also gave her children. Mary had other children after Jesus. We learn about that in Mark chapter 6, verse 3. And if you don't think having children is a real blessing, ask those people who cannot have children. Ask them how much they would want to have children, but can't, if you don't think having a baby is not a tremendous blessing. And God gave her responsibility. This girl was now responsible for the health and the development of the Son of God, the Savior of the world, the Messiah. He also blessed her with another son, James, who is believed to have written one of the epistles of the Bible. And some scholars also believe that the writer of the epistle of Jude was another one of her sons. 
So God gave her a terrific husband, He gave her children, He gave her responsibility, and He gave her honor. Honor is better than popularity, because honor is a reflection of who you are, not who you know. The angel said, hail, favored one. He honored her. You know, many young women today are afraid of not being pretty enough or popular enough or not making their mark on the world. And in doing this, they forget that the only lasting and satisfying recognition and achievement is the honor given to us by God, not the approval of other humans. Mary demonstrated that what God is looking for, what makes a woman beautiful and competent and worthy of His attention is her willingness to be obedient in a world that glorifies disobedience and rebellion. Another possible reason that God chose her, she had a servant heart. You know, the most famous fairy tale, Cinderella, the servant girl, becomes a princess and she lives happily ever after. Being a servant is something you want to get away from, not something you want to be identified with. But going against the grain requires us to go in exactly the opposite direction that everyone else is heading. Disciples of Jesus are looking for opportunities to be servants, to express a servant heart attitude. And we see this in Mary because in verse 38 she calls herself what? A servant. And in verse 39 and verse 56 we see her demonstrating that servant attitude. You know, several months into her own pregnancy, she travels on foot to help her cousin Elizabeth in the final months of her pregnancy. Now this wasn't just you know, an e-card. This wasn't just a phone call, hey, you're pregnant, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy for you, I hope that goes well. This was the cooking, cleaning, and washing kind of help that she brought while she herself was in the first trimester of her pregnancy. Mary was pleasing to God because she had a desire to help and serve in the way that help was actually needed. You know, we have a song today, Make Me a Servant. Make me a servant, Lord, make me like you, for you are a servant. Make me one too. You know, we sing that, the Devo, everybody sways. <laughs> Mary didn't know the lyrics to that song, but she knew the lifestyle. She knew the lifestyle. You know, service, believe it or not, is always inconvenient. We saw that, Lise and I and our family, yesterday. Our friends in the Lord, some from Montreal, some in this congregation, were rendering service to our family. Not just, hey, hope you have a great wedding. No, 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 no. They were in the kitchen cooking. They were mopping, they were cleaning, they were cutting cake, they were taking care of guests, they were vacuuming, they were decorating. Service. It's always inconvenient. It always costs you something. That's why it goes against the grain of your natural life. But it's the way God weeds out those who are for Him from those who just say they are for Him. Those who are just singing the song from those who are actually living the song. One other reason for her choice, Mary was submissive, she was serving, and most of all, she was a woman who searched the scriptures. I want to read to you the beautiful prayer that she made when she met her cousin Elizabeth. It's there again in Luke chapter one. It begins in verse 46. When they met, Mary said, my soul exalts the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior, for he had regard for the humble state of his bond slave. For behold, from this time on, all generations will count me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is upon generation after generation toward those who fear him. He has done mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in the thoughts of their heart. 
He has brought down rulers from their thrones and has exalted those who were humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent away the rich empty-handed. He has given help to Israel, his servant, in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and his offspring forever. Do you realize that every passage here is a quotation from the Old Testament? What does that tell you about Mary? She knew the scriptures. She was a person who was mature in the word. You know, I think we're a little confused when we discuss the role of women in the church. We like to say, you know, well, you know, biblically in the New Testament, uh, we learn that there's uh, male spiritual leadership in order to maintain you know, a balance and order and all that. And, and, and I believe that. I believe that that's true. I, I, I can teach that uh, with a clear conscience and a good heart. But I think we're a little confused. Yes, God has appointed men to lead in the area of public worship and serve as shepherds of the church. And this is in harmony with the creation and the need to provide order and structure in the body of Christ. However, we sometimes get the idea that women, that young women, that girls need less to know the word for some reason. Like that's something that men need to know because they may get up here and lead a prayer or, or teach a, a Bible class. We need to remember that the soul has no sex. The human soul needs to be fed in order to survive. The church cannot grow if only the men grow in wisdom and knowledge. Women must also grow in wisdom and knowledge and spiritual power so that they too can protect against false ideas, so that they too can share the gospel, so that they too can know God's will for their lives, so that they too can teach their children and their family, so that they too can find courage and comfort in time of need. Why Mary? Because Mary knew the word, and so she knew who God was, and she could relate to what was happening to her without disbelief and without going crazy. Can you imagine if she did not know the word of God and an angel appeared to her? Because she knew the word, she knew that these things occurred. And she wasn't afraid. Only a person who knew the word understood about angels and the promise about the Messiah and God's power and the proper, proper response to God, only someone who knew the word could properly respond to God. And Mary responded properly and secured for herself a place of honor for all of eternity. Why? Because she knew God's word. And I don't think any Woman in this congregation needs to know less the word than Mary knew the word. Don't get me wrong, Mary wasn't perfect. Not all of her children believed. James only believed after Jesus' resurrection. And she was not a very visible or dynamic disciple while Jesus was alive, she kind of hung back. But she had the qualities that God could work with to help her grow. She was obedient, she was willing to serve, and she was open to His word. In the end, God's choice of her to be the mother of Jesus was justified. We know it. She accepted the will of the Lord in having the baby, even though it meant public humiliation. She stayed near the cross of her son, even though nearly all had run away out of fear. And she was in the upper room with the apostles after Jesus' ascension, a place that was dangerous to be in at that time. Mary wouldn't exactly match the model being promoted by the media concerning young mothers today. But God is not looking for that model. God does not go to People magazine to find his woman. He's looking for a woman who can go against the model of this world in order to be the woman of God for our day and our time. Now if the Lord came searching here for that woman, right here in this place, would he find her? If the privilege of being the mother of Jesus was offered to the women of our day, 
Are there some here who could, like Mary, respond with a submissive and serving and searching heart? If the answer to this last question is yes, then praise God because the Lord has all kinds of ministry opportunities for women who are obedient and serving and seeking His will. If, however, the answer is no, it's a simple question, why not? Why not? What stops you from being like Mary? What hinders you from being God's woman? I tell you, whatever it is, the blood of Jesus Christ can make you worthy as a single woman, as one who is married, as a mother, regardless of your marital situation, God can make out of you the woman that He desires. And so on this Sunday, when we honor mothers, the greatest gift they can receive would be to let Christ change them into the women of God. If this is what you want, if this is what you need, then we encourage you to respond to the invitation today as Johnny leads us in that song. Please stand and sing that.